party's paladin decides to sneak up on the maniacal drow warlock who's threatening your world, but that full plate mail just yells, Hey, I'm coming. She couldn't sneak up on a rock. Good luck could change that, but she'll pay for it later. Hey there, adventurers. Welcome back to Short Rest Studios. My name's Judd. This is my personal invitation to you to join the Short Rest Studios Adventurers Guild on Patreon. Guild members get access to a dedicated Discord channel, exclusive content, early video releases, discounts on the Short Rest Studio shop, and video shoutouts. As the community grows, more exciting things are coming down the pipe, and guild members will be the first to know about them. Plus, your financial support, even the smallest amount, goes a long way toward helping me continue to create content for you. Please click the link in the comment and join the Adventurers Guild today. You could rightly say that luck is built into tabletop RPGs by their very nature. I mean, we're rolling dice for crying out loud. But in D&D and most games like it, your luck is mitigated by modifiers on your attack rolls and skill checks, and that's as it should be. But what if a character finds themselves in a situation where success is unlikely, but just might be necessary to their survival? Sure, as the DM, you could just let them fail and face the consequences, and there's a certain kind of fun in that, you psychopath. Mine is an evil lie. Or you could fudge the dice rolls, but that's not really very satisfying for you or your players, is it? Well, today I want to encourage you to commit some larceny. No, not for real. Steal something from another game. Add a layer of excitement to your D&D 5e game by introducing luck in the style of dungeon crawl classics. Yes, I realize there's a lucky feat in 5e, and that's fine, but it's only for players who choose it. And of course, halflings are naturally lucky. Well, we'll get to that later. First, here's how luck works in DCC. I'll drop a link to the core rules and the free DCC quick start so you can see these rules for yourself. And stick around because later in this video, I'm going to tell you how you can easily bring these rules into your 5e game. Luck is one of your six ability scores in DCC. You roll 3d6 to get your score as Crom intended, and you get a modifier based on that score ranging from minus three to plus three. Then you roll a d30, that's right, to identify your character's lucky roll that the luck modifier will affect. For example, if you roll an 11, your luck modifier will be permanently applied to checks to find or disable traps. It could be anything from spell checks to critical hits. Your lucky roll modifier stays the same even if your luck score changes. The luck modifier also impacts things like critical hits, fumbles, and corruption checks. One of my favorite aspects of this mechanic is that players can burn luck. A player can decide to make a heroic effort and give up a number of points from their luck score to add to a die roll. And yes, this means your luck score changes permanently. Sort of. There are also luck checks for when a character wants to try something that relies purely on luck, something that that's completely outside the character's skill set, like a paladin picking a lock or something that's just utterly ridiculous. This might seem a little weird for those of us who are used to roll over systems like 5e, you roll a target number or higher to succeed at something. And it is a little weird, though it does make sense when you think about it. A luck check in DCC is essentially asking the question, is this feat leaping over a hill giant's head to give a ridiculous example hard enough to overcome the character's luck phrased a little differently the die roll represents the task's difficulty against the character's luck score so instead of the dm or judge as they're called in dcc choosing a dc for the role you simply roll a d20 and subtract your luck modifier for the difficulty of the task to overcome your luck the roll has to be higher than your luck score therefore it's a roll under. If the roll comes in under your luck score, you succeed at the task. Keep in mind that you're subtracting your luck modifier, so a negative modifier would actually increase the result of the roll. Remember how I said burning luck sort of changes your score permanently? Well, luck can be restored over the course of your character's adventures, whether you burn luck or not. Characters who consistently act within their alignment can get luckier by being awarded more luck points at the judge's discretion, of course. And characters that act against their alignment will get unluckier. Thieves and halflings, remember I said I'd get to the halflings, are particularly lucky so they can restore their luck at a faster rate. So that's basically how luck works in DCC, but how would you apply this to a D&D 5e adventuring party? I mean, if you want to rewrite the whole system, you could replace one of the stock ability scores with luck. No? That doesn't sound like that much work. The simplest way is to add luck as sort of a seventh ability score. 
If you feel weird about that, just add a box to your character sheets labeled luck and put it there. It'll really have no bearing on anything else except that lucky roll and any attempt by the player to do something the Dungeon Master judges as based on luck. And that's the whole point. So beyond that, here are five tips for bringing the DCC luck mechanic into your D&D 5e game. Number one, drop the lucky trait from halflings. Any character that has any form of luck in the 5e rules, just get rid of that and replace it with this mechanic. Number two, look out for that D30. You can always go get some DCC dice if you want, but the core rules suggest rolling a D10 with a D6 as a control die. You add 10 to your D10 roll on a three or a four, you add 20 on a five or a six, and of course you add nothing for a one or a two. Number three, help out halflings and rogues. Thieves and halflings in DCC restore their luck faster than others. Give those same advantages to halflings and rogues in your 5e game and any other races or classes that you think it might be appropriate for. It might get a little tricky when someone wants to play a halfling rogue. I'd just suggest not stacking it, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. Number four, use the 5e ability modifier scale. DCC ability modifiers range from minus three to plus three. In 5e, those range from minus five to plus 10. To keep things consistent, just use the 5e scale. If you try it and you don't like it, you could always apply the DCC scale to luck, but I think using the 5e scale will be less confusing for you and your players. Number five, grab the DCC rules. You can grab a free copy of the DCC Quick Start rules, or you can go ahead and grab the full core rulebook. Both of those are gonna be linked in the description. Either way, you'll have the luck rules as well as a, the table for lucky rolls. If you're willing to spend a little, but you're not ready to commit to the full core rulebook, you can also get the DCC reference guide, which has all the tables from the core rules. There's tons of fun stuff in there. Give this a shot in your 5e game and let me know in the comments how it goes. Please don't forget to sign up for the Adventurers Guild on Patreon and check out the pinned comment for other ways you can support Short Rest Studios. May all your roles be lucky.